Oh my God. I'm alive. I'm alive. Oh my God. Good thing there's a cell phone recording this. Well, this is the end. And I've been wandering aimlessly for about 12 minutes now. I just came across this, what looks like a a campsite, a burial site, some sort of site. And I'm sure it looks like it could be thousands of years old. It's probably, I mean, it looks like ancient, but it was probably actually made this morning or something. And so it's, um, you know, it's classic modern. And all I have left with me is a banana, two Luna bars, mm, a kombucha town kombucha, and and that's it. Oh, no, and two adult orange cream sodas. I forgot about those. I have those too, but that's all I have, and I have to survive. Look, I know this is the end, and I don't even know if anybody's going to see this except, you know, apes, because I saw Planet of the Apes. And, but anyway, I know you guys might be disappointed and thinking, God, you know, this is the end of the world. You think Bob would be funnier, but, you know, it's just me out here. I don't have any props. Um, I don't have anybody to bounce ideas off of because, you know, civilization is dead except for zombies. And I don't think you've ever, if you've watched all those TV shows, you've never seen a zombie crack a joke, you know. Or it's very dry humor as they're biting your ear off. So, um, so anyway, try not to be di too disappointed in me. I'm the last human. I'm the last person on Earth. And this is as good as, this is as, good as it's going to get for humanity from here on. I'm doing my best out here. I have to say that I flunked... Um, survival school skills class. Okay, actually, technically I didn't flunk it. I actually couldn't find it because Siri was like freaking out that day, just would not take me to the survival class. So, so now it is, it's the end of the world and I'm left to fend for myself and I don't know, I guess I'm gonna just try shit, but do you think that's food? Is that, what is that? Is it nutritious? It looks like, if it was me, I'm thinking like, well, that plant is maybe like living off that gnarly looking thing, and maybe that has a lot of nutrients, but it does not look like, it doesn't look tasty. It doesn't look like chocolate. So I have wandered about a mile from the road, and I am finding all these interesting artifacts, cool things that people make. I guess I'm not the last person to journey out here. Look at these. Okay, there's an eagle circling. I'm guessing he doesn't see me even though he has eagle eyes um, because otherwise he'd be circling me because let me tell you, I'm a tasty snack. I've crossed the Great River and I'm gonna head to that because I think that's my only hope. If there's any people left, they'll probably be all at that structure where they're protected from zombies. And, you know, I saw this on The Walking Dead and Fear the Living Dead, which is actually scarier because that really traces the origins of the zombie virus and when civilization just like crumbled instantly. And it was terrifying. And um, so, yeah, so I'm living with this terror. I mean, I do have my Ruby Flam backpack. It's there. It's filled. It still has one banana, two Luna bars, two adult orange cream sodas, one kombucha town kombucha. Is that redundant? I don't know. I like their branding. And that's all I have. Well, I have other things, but depending on what state you live in, they may or may not be legal. It's legal in Washington, but hey, somebody in South Carolina gets a hold of this. I don't want them holding me to the legalities of my language skills. Okay, now I'm approaching what I thought was sanctuary when I was a half mile away, and boy, I could use my prescription glasses, but since this is Armageddon, I'm not gonna be seeing an optometrist very soon. Um, but this is not sanctuary, okay? This is just like a railroad crossing. And if anything, um, this would be a place where like zombies would kind of like chill out until like a live human came by and then they would jump out and eat that person. Not me. I mean, I'm not that person. I don't want to be that person. And uh, so, I don't know, I'm approaching cautiously. Uh, 
I'm not really approaching caution. There's no caution. This is bullshit. There's no zombies. I mean, besides me. Okay, I know Mother Nature's amazing, but I just can't believe that one beaver made this whole damn dam. It's incredible. In F incredible. God, this is a raging torrent. Damn. Damn those beavers. They damn. They damn well better damn. Because that's your job. So I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but in a post in a post-apocalyptic world, one thing that happens fairly quickly, more quickly than you would think, is that language and symbols and common motifs, I guess, of understanding and communication devolve and are replaced by new symbols and new meanings. And so, for instance, you can tell this is a post-apocalyptic world because this land on the other side of the river is marked by these odd diamond-shaped yellow signs. And there's no writing on them, there's no symbols, and yet there they are. And so, you know, they could be interpreted in many ways. My interpretations would be either A, uh, if I cross those yellow diamond lines, that imaginary border, I'll be struck with nuclear weapons. Or the other possible meaning is those signs are yellow and that's a good place to pee or to take your dog, you know, on a walk. But it's really hard to tell. So hey, I'm, I'm still here at the apocalypse and um, I just want to talk about a couple of the misconceptions about the apocalypse. One thing is that a lot of people think that you're going to have to fend for yourself, especially if you're alone. Um, you don't have to fend for yourself. Um, there are wolves, coyotes, eagles, orcas, snakes, bears. Um, there's any number of creatures that will rip and tear you apart and you have the option to not fend for yourself in that moment and just become food. Um, so just wanted to let you know that. And then the other thing is if you somehow survive the bears, the wolves, the orcas, the snakes, the pterodactyls, I don't know what you would encounter out here, but if you do somehow escape those things, how do you fend for yourself? And the answer is we're in nature and nature has a lot of answers. Um, there are fish in the stream, although I can't catch them and I don't know how to make a, a fishing rod. There are plenty of deer and large mammals, um, but I don't have a gun and I didn't take the slingshot making class. Um, berries, but they're almost out of season. Um, yeah, so I don't know. For me, it's like, I'm up to the challenge though, because if I can't find the resources I need, I'm just gonna go about a mile up the road and there's everybody's store. They have a fantastic deli, great sandwiches, and it's a little overpriced, but you know, we're out here in the middle of the Nowheresville apocalypse, so you gotta make do. You have to fend for yourself. I guess my favorite thing about the apocalypse is the freedom, because I can do what I want, and I can go where I want, and it's quiet, and it's peaceful, and I don't have to do anything, because it's the apocalypse, and everything that there was to do that was done before has been totally destroyed and obliterated, so that eliminates a lot of things to do other than being, subsisting, um, yeah, I'm happy, and like I say, freedom, it's not easy to come by, you know, and it's great to go to all these festivals and play all those gigs that I used to before the apocalypse, and now I can't even plug in my piano because everything's been destroyed, um, but yeah, it's great, I, I like this, and this is where I can... I can finally be me. Well, it's been about an hour and a half of apocalypse now and I'm barely alive. And by barely alive, I mean I'm barely wearing any clothes because it's so nice out, even for an apocalypse. I mean, God, it's gotta be like 78 degrees out here and I don't know, it's just really pleasant. So not a lot of, uh, 
not a lot of action. I haven't had a lot of real conversation because it's the apocalypse and, you know, dead, dead people don't talk except, what was that movie? I don't know. Um, so yeah, barely alive, all the bear necessities. But you know, when I think of bear necessities, I think of that Disney movie with the bears. All the bear necessities. Was that Jungle Book? I don't even know what that was, but I just know I liked, I liked those bears and I, I think about their bear necessities and how they compare to mine. And so anyway, so I don't have those bear necessities in the way that like a bear family would. I don't have cubs or cublets. Um, I prefer couplets, uh, much like this video series that I'm calling the, I'm going to call it now. I'm, I mean, I'm not calling this segment. I'm calling the series Apocalypse Now. Oh, shit. No, that was a movie. How about Destruction, The New Beginning? I like that. I don't know. I got to think about it. Why did they take Apocalypse Now? Why did that get taken? I should have known I wouldn't have thought of it first or even 30 years after the fact. Anyway. It is, it's so beautiful here. I love it. I love where I live. And then I think if I, if this were the end, and it were Armageddon, and this is where I had to live and die, I would embrace it. And I'd be so thankful. And the truth is, this is where I live. And God willing, fate willing, timing willing, this will be the place of my personal apocalypse. I love this place. Hi, bird. <laughs>